desire, driven, the skill and competitive spirit to find the will to win. That's PGF Softball. High fly ball, well struck center field. That's a rocket down the line. And little Southern California dreaming and you've got it all, the PGF Nationals. So put away the sunscreen and pass the eye black because the light shines the brightest on those willing to lay it all in the line for a national championship. Hello Southern California, you look spectacular again today and welcome to beautiful Irvine, California, in Orange County, the Animatic Stadium, Bill Barber Park. This is the Premier Girls Fast Pitch 10U Premier Championship to Southern California teams, the Ohana Tigers and the Cal Cruisers, and we're glad you're hanging out for this one. Beautiful park, beautiful pictures, talented athletes working oh so very hard today. Hi folks, Amanda Freed, Olympic gold medalist, national champion at UCLA. My name is Darren Sutton. Thanks for spending time with us. They're 10 you. You're a mother of an athlete not far off from this age. What do you look for for these athletes? Because what we've seen this week is they're incredibly polished. Well, they are for such a young age. And every year we get to this age group, you look at these athletes and you think, there's no way they're eight, nine, 10 years old. These, these young ladies have worked hard to get to here. Think about the fact that they've lost all last year, just the work alone that they've had to put in to get to this point. Now it's about celebrating their accomplishments and just having a good time. Allow us to introduce you to these athletes and their families as we start with the starting lineups for the Ohana Tigers. Tutu, Tulalele, Salu, very important athlete in the middle. My favorite name, Lexi Avila, Michaela Encinas. So many talented athletes. Avellaneda, Kayla, number 24 in the jersey. We'll tell you about all of them. Juliet Fouts is in the circle for the Cal Cruisers. The Cruisers with the light tops and with the dark uniforms, pants, and tops. The Ohana Tigers, both teams out of Southern California. Let's do this thing as that one is a screwball that misses outside. We're underway, Amanda and I. Thank you for taking some time with us and these athletes. The Ohana Tigers and the Cal Cruisers. France Carrion has coached for more than 15 years. He's the head coach of the Cal Cruisers team. Oh, that one skips in there defensively. Julia Gordon, Frankie Torres, Taylor Brown in the outfield. It's Carrion. Dubois and Seguenza with Burroughs and Okamoto behind the plate. Oh. And that one dives down and away just off the plate. Juliet Fouts, Huntington Beach, California. Village View, she is headed into Village View, her school this year. Dreams of UCLA. Colin is dad and Beth is mom. As Sofia Hernandez takes a strike three and one. You'll hear a lot of Californians. These two teams are Southern California teams. Sophia Hernandez, Sof, as her teammates and friends call us from Downey, California. And she's on. Jack Klingen works behind the plate. He's calling balls and strikes. Ben Agigi is at first. Greg Balderin is the second base umpire. And Cindy Dale is at third. Our umpire and crew today. Emily Yoon, number one in that jersey. And she will be in the circle as well. In on the hands, fights it up, covering ground, nice play. Angela Dubois ranges across, first out of the inning. And really good read on this ball, bleeding towards that 5-6 hole, but then sees it off the handle, makes the grab. A great start for the Cruisers defensively. Malaya Vargas, Pico Rivera, California. Catcher, utility player, wherever you need her, the right-handed hitter, takes strike one. Edward School and a sixth grader. Anel and Chris are her parents as she loads that back leg and takes outside. carry has been hovering over by that circle, picking up the catcher's sign to the pitcher just so she can tell where the ball's going to go and anticipate where it might be hit. She's doing a lot of running back and forth, though. It's, a, it's quite a distance. 
that's a good chance for her also to go in and speak a couple of words of encouragement to her pitcher. And there she is. She bobbles. No play there at second. Maybe a play out in front of her. That just slipped at the bottom and all the way to the tip of her glove. Unable to make the play. Ella at third. Well, I knew this ball was coming. Stayed down well. Looks like she might have picked her head up just for a split second. She knew where her play was going to be. But now runners on first and second. We'll put a runner out there as well. Courtesy runner for the catcher. Number 25, I'm sorry. Number 13, 13. Zeli Gutierrez will run it first. Gutierrez now. Tulu Tululele Salu, the first baseman from Anaheim, California. Dreams of playing for the Oklahoma Sooners someday. Rihanna and Thomas are her parents, and for now, it's just the three of them. She's an only child. We got a chance to know Salou's family. And the given name is what they're most proud of. Her mates call her Lele. But I think when you get to this point, you're on national TV and you have a family name, we will absolutely call you Tulu Tulu Lele. This is a beautiful name. Quick conversation. Quick visit for the cruisers. Grant's carry on the head coach of this team is the father of three daughters who are really active in this sport. Tell you more about them as we go throughout the day, but impact players at high levels. Beautiful pitch. That's the outside corner, says Jack. To Salou. The fouts have been working away to these lefties with that screwball. She's got a lot of spin and some good movement. Changed up on her that time. And in that changeup, we saw that at the older age levels, what a difference that makes, and it's so important to work it. At this younger age, great location, good execution. Screwball misses outside. A really good handle on the softball that you're talking about. We're seeing manipulation of that ball at a very, very young age. I mean, this is 10U, folks. Those hands are smaller. Another changeup popped up, back of short. Up over her head, Du Bois makes the play for the out. I think it's not just the stuff that the pitchers have in the circle and the way that she's able to move the ball and the pitches to execute, but being able to do it in this type of a situation, probably the biggest game Fouts has ever pitched in. She's so composed. Look at that focus. Out of Whittier, California, Lexi, here's the cheers from the crowd, Lexi Avila. Granada Middle School, a rising sixth grader. She'd love to play for Coach Tarr someday up in Washington. So many good choices. Mom Nancy played soccer at Irvine, UC Irvine. Closed up stance. That one misses high and away. Her dad was a football and a basketball player when he was younger, Dad Tony. A gate student, so really strong in the classroom, and a 4.0 GPA. And she wants to honor today her grandma Maria as she plays in this game. Little roller, high bouncer out of the circle. Fouts fielding and firing in time for the out. We're just getting started, these talented 10 new players at the PGF National Championship. Hello, Southern California boy. This ballpark is shining bright for the 10U PGF National Championship. Ella Carrion's at the top of the order. Julia Gordon will bat second for the Cal Cruisers, and Callie Siguenza 
will bat third. We'll introduce you to each and all of the athletes. You see Fouts will handle her bat, and they will deal with Emily Yoon out of Fullerton, California. Just a couple of years ago, she started pitching, and it didn't go well, and now she embraces it. Her story is an amazing one. She's pitched in big games. We'll get to know EY. Emily Yoon takes the rock, and she rolls in the circle. Let's do this bottom half with the Cal Cruisers. First pitch is striked over the outside corner. Keeping the sun away for now, the marine layer settles over the park. That will change as the morning turns into afternoon, as it always does in California. One and one the count. Big L, as she is known, Huntington Beach, California, St. Bonaventure Catholic School and a fifth grader. Dreams of Stanford or possibly UCLA when she plays in college. And the count is one and two. Ella honors and really looks out for Montana Fouch. She says, I've seen so much of what she's done, including that perfecto against UCLA. Two and one the count. Dad is the head man. Dad France, mom is Lisa. Dad the head coach. Siblings Julia and Anna, her two sisters, as she rolls it to the left side. You better hurry. In and out of the glove at first base. Salud couldn't hold it. On to second, head first slide. Carry on reaches. Avila's throat, I mean, just a touch high. And the stretch from Salou unable to make the play. On great contact, nice job stopping this ball. Had to get rid of it quickly. Salute tries to keep her foot on the bag and that ball's just out of reach. Huntington Beach native Julia Gordon. Defensively working. Rubea anchors things in the middle of the outfield. And Yoon in the middle of the diamond with Vargas behind the plate. Avila Hernandez. EY and Salou on the infield. And as we said, Ovellanede in center field. Julia, an athlete that does a lot of things to stay active. As she punches that one foul, one ball and two strikes to count. Including staying active with some dance shoes on. She loves jazz, she loves tap. She'll lace up those basketball shoes and play basketball and the soccer cleats because she plays club soccer. Ooh, a little athlete. With some art involved. With artistic I like ability. Part. I know, I love that. I like that a lot. Don't tell me, by the way, that if you perfect your skills in jazz and tap, that won't help you on the soccer pitch. I, it will absolutely, you know. I have my kids in gymnastics. <laughs> love them to do dance just because I know the benefits of it. A little roller left side, fielding, firing another chance for the two to get together, looking for an extra bag, and grabbing it is carry on. Avelia and Salou got back together, and this time they turned it into an out. Runner at third, though. This is just a great job of putting the ball in play. You want to move your teammate over 60 feet. It's hitting a spot that when that play is made, Carrion can break for third and put herself in scoring position. A little dying ground ball out to short. Only players at first. It's in time. The run does score. Kelly May Seguenza with a ground out but an RBI. The second baseman from Huntington Beach, California, and it's one to nothing cruisers. It's close, by the way, very close. Yeah, and a really good read on this ball. Carry on, sees it down, and I think that's a great decision to go to first to get that shore out. Nice stretch by Salou. Yeah, they got it right. I mean, that's a really good call, a tough call for an umpire there. Frankie Torres, Francesca, her given name. The center fielder, first pitch swinging, fouls it off. She's from Paramount, California, will be a fifth grader. 
at Wirtz Elementary School. Marina Francisco, our mom and dad. Honor roll student. Stands close to home plate as she takes outside. I think that's a common approach at this age. Get those toes up on the line because a lot of times you'll have a pitcher who's afraid or not confident, I should say, in going inside on the batter. They'll tend to live off the plate. This is exactly what you're talking about here, Amanda. This is a great shot. Get those toes up on the line, deep in the box, make that pitcher throw farther than she wants to have to throw. And remember, at this age group, 10 you they're throwing from 35 feet, so it's fairly close. 12U next, we'll see 40 feet, and then you know, obviously you go up to the 14U, you're back at 43. To the right side. English on that one, but it's fielded cleanly. EY makes the play for the out. Audrey turns it into the third out of the inning, but the Cal Cruisers strike first, PGF 10U national title game. Such an incredibly busy day, really. These elite athletes at the 10 and the 12 and the 14 new age groups. We celebrate with the rookies today, though, with the breakfast game, if you will. And the coffee is flowing and the cheering is loud. Talk about aspirational, I mean, this is it. And you see actually little eight and nine year olds looking out at the 10 U's who will stay and watch the 12s and the 14s. That's what PGF's all about. Yeah, ready to roll. Look at all eyes. Look at the young lady on the left. I mean, just either that or she's just waking up. She's <laughs> either dialed in on this one or she's just waking up. And you and I, as both parents, know it could be one another, but I think she's wide awake and dialed in. So many. Talented athletes out here taking them. But that's what makes this event different. There's that one. This is outside. This is Michaela Encinas out of Pico Rivera, California. Rivera Middle School, a sixth grader. Jason and Darlene are her parents. That one misses away from Fouts. Mags Okamoto is her battery mate. The catcher for Juliet Fouts. The teammates with the responsibility to get through this game today. Rolled out towards short. That's firmly struck and turned quickly into an out by Dubois. So this is a nice spot with this, and that's actually carry on that shifted over to shortstop. Dubois is over at third base, but carry on grabs that, makes a nice throw across the diamond. Hustle down the line. Oh. That one dies outside. Audrey EY, Chino Hills, California, fifth grader. And she takes a strike over the outside. Her dad, Andy, the head coach of this program. Her mom is Julie. And her brother, Andrew, is 14. Changed up on her one and two. Just hammering that outside part of the plate and then pulling the string on a beautiful changeup. Look at the break down on that pitch. So it seems to be the approach early on, educating the audience, educating myself, Amanda. You stay away a little bit more at this age group than trying to force pitching in. Yeah, I think with the strength of the hitters, it's tougher to hit hard opposite field. And like I mentioned before, pitchers aren't completely comfortable hitting that inside part of the plate effectively. And you know how it is, young hitters like to pull. It's a pull game, so I think staying away can be effective. Tried to pull that pitch away. Rewarded, though. Claps her hands as she touches first. Audrey with a base hit. It was away. 
She tried to pull it, but enough strength to dump it into shallow right field over the head of Seguenza. Yeah, the setup outside, just belt high, gets around it out front. Just a punch shot into shallow right field. Kayla Veyaneda, the center fielder. Kayla, number 24 on that jersey. Veyaneda out of West Covina, California. And she's in the hole 0 and 1. Bayonetta dreams of UCLA someday. Played at some fun PGF events last night was one of them as she takes out size. So, matter of fact, she shared, my greatest moment was coming up to bat last night in the seventh inning, semifinal bases loaded and scoring in the first two runs of the game to get us to the ship. By the way, the kids call it the ship championship. <laughs> And when I say the kids, I mean anyone younger than me. <laughs> well, you asked me yesterday, Darren, about where it clicks, you know, in terms of this game. And these athletes do so many different things. And I remember 10 and under being my first chance at playing in a national championship with my all-star team. And I think that's really where it shifted for me. I still played soccer. I still did a lot of other things. But when you experience this level of competition and you're successful, you crave it and you want to be back there and it elevates your game. And I think these athletes are, are experiencing that now. And, and I don't think there's any turning back. A great perspective, Amanda. Amanda Freed, Olympic gold medalist, national champion at UCLA and now a, a sports mom, you know, going through it all over again. <laughs> Bouncing ball, backhanded play, long throw across the diamond. Oh, what a play by Carrion. Ella was ready. We talked about her peeking in on the pitches that are coming home. That's a quick hands play. Nice backhand. That's Dubois over there. <laughs> Carrion and Dubois shifted on the roster. They're listed as Boy being short, but she's over there at third base. Nice backhand, and then a strong throw across the diamond. Good call, Amanda. They shifted spots. Dubois moved over to third. Carry on is now at short. And Dubois with a heck of a play. J.J. Ugalde, the Pico Rivera, California. Jalen takes outside, curveball that time. Monet and Eddie are her parents. And her brother, also Eddie, junior, five years old, and as she says, my number one fan. That's what younger siblings are supposed to do, plus, if you prove yourself the number one fan of Big Sis, there are a lot of goodies you can get at the snack bar. <laughs> That's very true. Well, that was a nice play, by the way, Du Bois. There's a pitch in. I'm All right. Thinking the same thing. It's a great spot. Even if you're not completely comfortable hitting it for a strike, throw it to get the batter moving and then open up that outside part of the plate a little better. And again, she doubled up on her. So that's higher level stuff that we've just seen from Fouts because you go in for effect, I mean off the plate, then she went in for a strike. Yeah, I think once you get a team thinking outside and leaning, then you bring that inside two in a row. You don't think the pitcher's gonna go two in a row. Maybe she's settling in, getting a little more comfortable. That's a great location. Just off the plate, pulled the string back. Pitching careful, ended up putting a runner on. From Downey, California, she walked and was stranded in the first inning. Sofia Hernandez. is an athlete at the 10U age group that is a natural right-handed hitter and wanted to take on the ability to slap, wanted to use her God-gifted speech. She said, that's been my biggest challenge. 
being able to adjust, make it possible, has been a huge challenge, but here she stands. You better do it young if you make that decision, <laughs> right? Or commit to it, right? I know athletes that still are making that change late into high school or early college. But the earlier you can do it, obviously, the more time you have to perfect it. The Ohana Tigers, a Southern California-based team around Cerritos, California. Wearing the black uniforms, the dark uniforms, the Cal Cruisers. South County, as the kids like to call it, Orange County. Mission Viejo, California, in the light uniforms as that one's high and away. with their back against the wall just a little bit. And it's three and two. The strikeouts have been stacked up. She's played a lot this season, has Juliet Fouts. More than 300 strikeouts as a pitcher, which means you're playing all the time. You put her in the classroom, she's passionate about math and art. Slap toward the hole, trickles on. Push the outfield on the throw to the plate, not in time. We're tied at one. Hernandez uses the other side of the diamond and is rewarded. And a great battle. The 3 2 count stays in, just puts it in a perfect spot. Even if this ball would have been fielded, would have held the runner at third, but would have not have had a play at any base, but a great, great effort by carry on at shortstop. Emily Yoon, the pitcher with the bat in her hands. Golden Elementary, a sixth grader. Kenny and Renee are her dad and mom. And Emily takes a changeup outside, patiently watches it run to 2-0. and oh. Scouting report that Emily shared with us, I'm hyper competitive, able to focus under stress, good contact skills at the plate with a very good eye. That's who she is as a hitter. There is good contact, it's rolled out to third. Dubois makes the play for the out. We talked about that 10U age group, just the beginning for my partner Amanda Freed as she journeyed to titles and medals, changing the face of the sport. We learned from her today, PGF, 10U national title game. As Cal Cruiser's team and their journey, it certainly is always fun to get to know local athletes. These two programs know each other a lot, and that'll happen when you have two local programs make it. We're talking about their head coach, France Carrion. As he puts Mags Okamoto, the catcher, in this spot. Emily Yoon rocks and fires. It's a line drive down the third baseline. It sneaks right on by into second with a double. That's Mags. Mags starting it off. Nice line drive down the third baseline. An easy stand-up double. Nabanyo did a nice job just knocking it down. It was headed all the way to the wall. Trickled by her, if only a couple of feet. So Mags loves her travel ball experience, loves playing this sport, gets it started. Here's Myla Burroughs out of Lakewood, California. And she takes high, one and one the count. First baseman and a pitcher. Had the walk-off hit in the semifinals. It earned the spot to play in this championship game. That's on Mai's resume. This one she rolls to the right side at minimum. That will move the runner to third, and that's what it does. Burroughs with a productive out. Angelina Dubois. 
Carolina Du Bois. Happy as she is known. Seal Beach, California. I can hang with someone with a nickname of Happy. <laughs> And disappears away up and over the swing for Du Bois. Seal Beach, California, heading into her fifth grade year. Crystal is her mom, Derek is her dad. Dad played in the Royals organization, was drafted by KC out of high school, played a little bit in college as well. We didn't sign, but Combe College and Maryville State University. I like mom's sports experience. I'll tell you in a moment, mom's athletic experience. I'm down with. Swing and a miss, and down she goes. Mom, as she heads back, won the women's event at the World Series of Poker. No. Angelina's mom, that's a good pitch. Oh, just breaks away from the barrel. Bouts with a chance now to help herself out, the pitcher for this Cruisers team. Jules with a slightly closed stance, takes up and away. She loves watching Montana Fouts, different spelling, and Rachel Garcia because as she says, and I quote, they're great pitchers who also hit. They seem like nice people who I'd also like to meet. Well, she got that right. Both very nice people. And we talked to Coach Murphy about Montana Fouts and he said, couldn't, couldn't ask for a better teammate. Great person, great pitcher, obviously. We see, we saw what she was able to do, and Rachel Garcia, her talent speaks for herself, but just so humble and great role models. Well, social media, and when used properly, has this sport bubbling, and bubbling over. And it's doing all the right things, as you said. When you have athletes that are based in California, wanting to meet athletes that are playing in the SEC or up in the Northeast. You're doing it right, softball. Keep it up. Swings right through that one down. She goes, that's a solid inning for you. And understanding there was a leadoff double. And she cleaned it up very nicely. Spin around, 1-1. Top of the third inning, there's a future star, no doubt about it. Fried and I will still be here. We'll be calling it. That's the one thing that has stood out to us, and it does each and every year, but even more so this year, just the amount of families. Not just parents of athletes, but folks in this community that have said, hey, there's something good going on, I can walk right in, and they've walked right in. A community event, albeit with a national feel because it is, but you feel like you're home if you're from Georgia or from Tennessee or from Chicago like we've seen. This community makes people feel at home. Yeah, we missed this. We missed this last year. It felt so good to be back and just be together playing this game. Malaya Vargas takes a strike over the outside corner. Vargas singled back in the first inning. Favorite player, Aubrey Monroe. As that one is fouled back to the screen. I asked her why, she said, Aubrey is where I want to be in the future. Where I want to be. As an athlete out here in Southern California, maybe a few more challenges with the lockdown than others around the country. As she shoots that one to the right side. Said, it's been one of my, my greater challenges, but I'm proud of my teammates and I. We overcame lockdowns, we stayed ready, and we found ways to work. Gosh, Amanda, <laughs> you and I weekly host a show, and we talk to athletes as young as this, all the way up to the highest levels of Olympians that all kind of tried to do the best they could. Right, and I think we, we can't discount how important the game is to them, and, and how difficult it was to lose that, but then also to switch gears and say, okay, well, I, I have this time for me now to, be, 
to be better, to get better, to spend time with my family, but also perfecting my craft, get creative. I think it allowed a lot of athletes to find ways to be better that they never would have ever tried. Middle of the diamond, into center field. That is a base hit. Alea Vargas, two for two. Well, Vargas has so much power in that swing. It's off the end of the bat, but still hard hit up the middle. <laughs> Zaley Gutierrez. <laughs> we'll run it first. Zaley, catcher and an outfielder. Love to Oregon State. Would love to play there someday if she runs it first. Zaley is the daughter of Crystal and Danielle. Gutierrez has played since she was five years old. And makes her trip to play with this team from Oakland, California, up north. Hello, committed parents. <laughs> That's a compliment to this program. Oh, I, absolutely, and we see that quite often. Parents that just want to be a part of something good and have the best opportunities for development for their kids to play at these types of tournaments. You'll see that with a program in the Midwest like the Beverly Bandits. They'll pull from Wisconsin and Ohio and Indiana to go to the south side of Chicago. Two and one to count. Well, oh, what a great pitch on a hitter's count. That Fouts is able to get that pitch to run away. Look at the movement. Tulu Tulu Lele over the top of that one. Two and two the count. Salu would love to be a sooner someday. And now she'd love to hit a ball in the gap, though. Not on that pitch, it's three and two. And I like the idea off the plate, a little further, a little further, but great eye by Salou. A patient walk by Salou. Couple of base runners to start things here in the third. Juliet Fouts with some work to do. Lexi Avila takes the assignment. Lex grounded out back in the first inning, right back to the circle. Johanna Tigers, the Cal Cruisers, two Southern California teams. That one off the foot. Again, back to the circle. But this time, she's rewarded. That got Fouts in the foot, and then she couldn't find it. And quite frankly, even if she did right away, I don't think there's a play at that point. I think it was fortunate that Fouts' foot got in the way of this ball and prevented it from going into the outfield and scoring a run. Keeps it on the infield, runners advance. Now they'll give Fouts a minute to recover. We may have a pitching change here, let's see. I think some juggling going on as we keep an eye on who's moving where. The center fielder, Frankie Torres, was handed a mask. Six, and that's exactly what will occur. Frankie will move into the circle from center field. We'll keep an eye on Fouts if, in fact, she heads out to center field to play. Got the shades on. She's on the move. And you all understand this sport. We may see her again at the circle a little bit later. So Fouts to center field. Torres in the circle. Oh, 
Rance Carrion, for 15 years, has been a part of this sport. He has three daughters. Julia pitches at Pomona Pitzer. Daughter Anna attending Oregon State in the fall, who played for Mel Seavers, the 18U gold team. And Ella, of course, is the starting shortstop, the man calling the shots for these Cal Cruisers. He's trying to stop a rally here. KK Encinas, left-handed bat. Infield tight right now, tight all the way around. Into the dirt it goes, that will play to run. Zaley Gutierrez sliding in safe round. And first pitch just gets Into away from Frankie goes, Torres. That will play to run. And it's a great read on the pass ball. When you've got the bases loaded, you can take risks to now all runners move up. Still have runners on third and second. Two balls and no strikes to count to Encinas. Encinas. One heck of a basketball player, too. As a matter of fact, in her league recently was the MVP. How far away? Nice job. Not too far away. Okamoto that time using her entire body to block it. Yeah, we put a lot on these catchers, especially when you start changing pitchers. Catchers also have to change their approach. They're seeing different spins. The umpire taking care of his, his catcher. Jack Klingon. Sweeps the plate that was perfectly clean to make sure that his young catcher in front of him is all right. Heaven smiles on your catchers because not everyone wants to do it. In this case, it's Mags as she sets up outside. And that will load the bases. That's ball four. Audrey Ewi as Okamoto goes back to work. Peek it into the dugout. What sign shall she send out? Ewi singled and scored back in the second inning. 1 0 of the count to Audrey. There's a lot of options for Audrey. Look for something up in the zone, try to lift it out of the infield, some, hit something hard in the dirt. Audrey, by the way, certainly loves this national television exposure as she gets ready to hit. But she's no stranger to it. You see, she's got some acting on her resume. If you've ever stayed at a Days Inn, you might have been influenced by a fine commercial in which Audrey acted. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Our older brother Andrew is 14. I'm sure he's a huge fan. Base is full. 2-0 the count. Audrey plays for her mamos, her grandmother, inspiring me because she says she's nice to everyone. She does so much for our family, and she prays for us a lot. Outside, 3-0 the count. We're all better because of the prayers of our grandmothers and moms, aren't we? Yeah, it's fun to hear all these kids really appreciate that. And it's, it, it's such a, it's an effort by the whole family. Grandparents are involved, parents. Just look at the support in the stands for this age group. Support from the coaches in the circle. Still smiling, completely under pressure. Hey, it's not a big deal. Do what you can, put the ball in play, let your defense work. Let's have a good time. You love to see the encouragement in these high stretch situations. Well, for the good coaches, and we've seen both these coaching staffs work, you make a huge mistake if at this age group everything's not a teaching moment. Right. 
And that's exactly the, what's the tone of that meeting. And a run scores and an RBI. It's that elusive strike zone right now for Torres. And let's see if, in fact, France wants to make another move. Uh, we've seen this a couple of times over the last couple of events and championships where these athletes are so versatile and it becomes a hot hand situation. Yeah, that's a tough situation to come into with the bases loaded, pulling out of center field. Obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, she might have been warming up in that bullpen, but sometimes you just, you nod when you get the call and you do your best, and this is not a typical friendly game type of situation. This is the national championship, so there's a lot riding on it. One and oh, the count. <laughs> Bayonetta grounded out the third, back in the second inning. She's another one who makes a trip and stays active. Very supportive of her as she takes high and inside. Did that get her hand or did that get the bat? That got the bottom of the bat. And it hurts. There's no doubt it hurts. Yeah, that didn't get the bat, that got wrist. I understand why you called that, but that got wrist. Don't you think? Did you see it that way? Yeah. Yeah, that, that definitely, that got wrist. I don't think it was going through the zone. I think it was pulling away. So this is a reviewable play. Should it would have been something that could have been chosen to be reviewed, it could have been. This is a reviewable play, but they opt not to. That's a foul ball. Each team gets one challenge per game. One more time, you can see a bayoneta. And if you look at where the hands are over the plate, remember these athletes have their toes way up on the chalk line, so she's hanging over the plate. So help me understand, is that why that was called? I'm, I'm thinking that might have been why that was called. Maybe he understands it was a hit by a pitch, but it was the position of the hands. Look how the hands and the body, the elbows are all over the plate. Instead, it's a hot shot down the left field line. The Tigers score one, looking for two. Safe at the plate, on into third, standing up into second, back behind. Oh, that's so much better than being hit by a pitch. a great response, good recovery after get, getting hit by the pitch to come up and turn on that hard inside. Clapping as you cross home plate. Yeah, that feels way better than, than just taking first. <laughs> <laughs> Alex goes back to work. This is with the first pitch to J.J. Valde. J.J. an all-star basketball player, all-star softball player, and a 4.0 student, and the count is 2-0. Oh. J. 
She idolizes and watches a lot Maya Brady. So she's a big hitter, a utility player, can play anywhere. Roller foul ball will do it again. In the classroom, math. She loves it. Favorite teacher, Miss Pena. Snap go. Miss Payne, you'd be glad to know the compliment that Ugalde gave you. She said, she's my favorite teacher now. She's very strict, but always pushed to get the best out of me. So Miss Payne, well done. That's when you know you're doing a good job. <laughs> you can be strict and your students still like you. Three and two the count. Bouts trying to keep it right here. He's got nobody out. Oh, that's a big take on a changeup. Just tantalizing it somehow. JJ able to let it sail by. Back to the top of the order. Sofia Hernandez, this again. A changeup, that's a great idea. Maybe just off the outside part of the play, but didn't miss by much. Sophia takes a shot down that left field line, but it's a foul ball. Stance, nowhere to put her. Again, that slapper takes a shot that way. It's been a good day for Sophia. She drove in a run in the second, and she walked and was stranded in the first, but on twice. Now finds herself behind 0 2 with the bases loaded. Another run. Let's see what the call is. They'll move the runners back. I think the call is put out of the box. That's the right call. That's a great call. Slappers have been pushing the envelope on this for years, and we've really started to focus in on it and make sure that those feet are staying in the box. That's a great call. So the bases remain loaded. EY, Avellaneda, Ugalde. And 1 and 0 the count to Emily Yoon. As a pitcher is a fun one. Started pitching three years ago. She hit the first batter she faced. Coaches kept encouraging her and she stuck with it. She did okay. She learned a little bit, took on some lessons. During her first direct season, she was on the youngest team, second to last place. End of the season, this young team was the mightiest. They won the end of the year tournament against all the older players. She pitched a six inning thriller in the semis. And then pitching was in her blood. She rolls it out to short. She drove in a run to help her cause. Yoon, who is stuck with pitching, also helps with the bat. Six to one. I love hearing all those journeys of these pitchers. They haven't been throwing for very long. And I think at this age, I was kind of pitching, dabbling in catching, still haven't figured it out. I didn't have the best beginning to my pitching career either, because it's tough. Yeah, Yoon's story is a fun one. 
She said she had game-winning hits on both of those games, but the hug with mom was the best part. Now mom helped write this, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's an effective pitch, that changeup. Alea Vargas comes up empty that time. Vargas, though, has a couple of hits. She has one in this inning. She's two for two. That's tough to lay off of. Great pitch. That one sails high and away. Two and one the count to Vargas. Got the call over the inside, two and two the count. Sean and Joey Quarles about a decade ago starting what has turned out to be this Ohana Tigers program. Bouncing ball toward short, ranging on a high hop, throwing on across the diamond, unable to dig it out over there. Burroughs couldn't make the play, so another run will score. And it's seven to one. Ranging to her right. Carry on does a nice job going into the hole, plants and throws just a little in between, hop to first base, almost picked by Burroughs. Great effort here. Tulu, Tulu, Lele. Salu. Takes outside, 1 0 the count. Honors roll, principal list, a 4.0 GPA. Who do you like to watch when you're on YouTube, when you're on your mom's smartphone? How about the Sooners' Jocelyn Allo? She says, I love her because she's paving the way for great softball players and today's Polynesian female athletes. This playmate out there at third. You picked a good one in Allo, certainly. Your team having a very good day in the title game. Tigers, Ohana Tigers out of Southern California lead it by a score of seven to one. And the sacrifice that goes on in playing that ever important position of playing in the circle. And we see Juliet Fouts frustrated with the result today and being consoled. better for it, certainly. Yeah, when you take on this age division, you, you really have to remember that they're so young in their careers, and as you mentioned, Darren, everything is a, a learning moment, a learning experience. Winning is secondary to the lessons these ladies are learning. Down off the end of the bat. Aisley Smith got her first opportunity to hit the talented athlete from Long Beach, California. Stephanie and Chris are her parents. Well, I'm a college volleyball player. That one sails high. Ella Carrion, Big L. She singled, scored back in the first inning. One run at a time, one swing at a time, one base runner at a time, and that's how you dig out of these holes. Look, these cruisers are talented. It's three and one. 
And we've seen how just putting the ball hard in play can make a big difference. Got some great defenders out there in the field. But you want to make them work. The 3-2 pitch. Outside, ball four. That's what you're. That's exactly what you're talking about, Amanda. Yeah, don't don't look at the score right now. Just think about what your team needs, pitch by pitch. Still a lot of ball game left. Avery Bartz gets a chance to run. Julia Gordon rounded out the third back in the first inning. Pretty pitch called a strike. Huntington Beach, California native. Puts it on the ground, got a piece of EY right in the middle there. So Emily, let's hope she's all right. I'll come out and check on her right away. Pretty piece of hitting by Gordon. Couple of runners on for the Cruisers. Yeah, it looked like it got the wrist maybe just missing the glove. That does not feel good. At least it's not the pitching hand. Happy with the results. Everyone's okay. Cali Seguenza with a chance to make some noise. Rolls that one to the right side. Good pitch in on the hands. Trot to the bag. Salou makes the play for the out. Runners move to second and third, but that's a huge second out. Yeah, nice job moving both base runners up into scoring position. Now we have two outs. Puts a little more pressure on Frankie Torres out there at the plate. On the outside corner, plus a swing for Frankie. Francesca, her given name, Wurtz Elementary, a rising fifth grader. Closed up stance, one and one the count. She's been a softball all-star. She's played Little League and played at the all-star level two on the baseball diamond. Didn't mean to, but she'll run hard. And in time for the out. Well, that's a big shutdown there by Emily Yu and understanding she was hit by a comebacker. Her team's up 7-1. Beautiful day in Southern California with the sun peeking through. The 10U PGF Premier Girls Fast Pitch National Championship game. Amanda Freed, Darren Sutton, and you. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're having fun with all of you. 
And Ella Carrion goes to work, gets the call in the circle. Needs some shifting around that we'll keep an eye on. Different defenders in different parts of the day. We've seen a couple of pitchers play in this game. And it's been an active day for that man, the head coach of a very gifted program. I think most importantly, Fouts just feel like my day's done. That's tough. That's part of the growth of being out there with this sport. It's like we've got a new shortstop. We'll tell you all about it. Lexi swings and misses over the top of that one. Avila. Has played with Whittier Girls softball. Has played with the SoCal Athletics' Kim Beck. 4.0 student takes up and away from carry on. Rolled out towards short. That one pops free long enough to be a tough play. Torres out there at short. Unable to make the play was Frankie. Yeah, that was a tough one. It looked pretty, pretty routine, but there was a lot of top spin on that ball. And by the time it took its second and third hop, you had a feeling it could be trouble. Michaela, right out of the box. In time is the call. What a great play in the circle by Carrion, who's an infielder by trade. She pounced on that one. Oh, that was close. And they'll talk about taking a look, and they'll take another look. Yeah, and this was just a great job of fielding your position. Initial look. <laughs> says out to me. But let's see what we see. As they turn it over to replay. We're tough to overturn that one. I guess that's where I'd go. From that look right there, but when it's, oh goodness, look at the heel. Ball in glove, foot not there. Oh, oh it's a close one. Gosh. Again, tough to overturn. They're talking it through right now. Let's see. That was pretty quick. Yeah. Out is the call. Out is the call. Boy, they got that one right. What a good call. <laughs> ben Agigi is out there at first. Ben, nice job, sir. <laughs> Breathing a little sigh of relief. We've had so many of these close calls. Look at how quickly Carrion jumps off the mound. Backhands that ball, makes a play at first base. Plant, and you've got to have a strong throw. <laughs> Line drive, base hit, left field. Cinder on down. That will play to run. Great trail running into second. Eight to one is the score. EY with a beautiful approach. Third time she's been on second RBI. Now and this is one of the hardest hit balls we've seen this game. Opposite field, great bat angle, great extension. That's some big league hitting right there. That is beautiful hitting. Kayla Veyaneda. Pops that one to the right side. Defense perfectly charging in, making the play for the out. Taylor Brown. Now doing a nice job out there. Now think about these girls are fresh out of rec ball. A lot of them not too long ago playing in that little 8U division. And look at that hitting right there. That is a seasoned athlete. Oh, 
One and oh the count. JJ Ugalde. Takes a change up that misses outside. It's a seven run lead. As we play here in the top of the fourth inning. They're plus seven with an eight after five run rule and obviously when you're the cruisers, you have a simple thought. Hey, give me three runs. Well, I can score three runs with my eyes closed and I've got a brand new game. And that's the thought, obviously, for, for carry on. Let's get back in that dugout. Give me three runs and we'll be fine. <laughs> My dad making a nice play down there on a softball. And he's trying to get it back into the game. And the reminder is, yes, you can keep it, sir. Three and one the count. That's ball four. So on the other side, Amanda, when you consider the run rule, I mean, the thought of if you're the Tigers is we're playing for another. Right. Uh, give me, get me one more run, and then let's go to work defensively. Yeah, every run you can put on the board just gives you a, a bigger cushion, obviously, on defense and more confidence as the game goes on. But the cruiser is fully capable of coming back, so no lead really is big enough in this ball game. Well, and that's why you try to eliminate the sixth and the seventh. Right. I mean, when you <laughs> get to this that point where short. you can, right? That's just two more opportunities for the opposing team to do what they've done this entire tournament. One and zero the count. Back to the top of the order, Sofia Hernandez, California Cruisers, a team out of Cerritos, California. In the blue and white uniforms, in the black uniforms, the Ohana Tigers. South Orange County, Mission Viejo, California, as that one is high, 2 0 the count. At home, she's the big sis, Sophia. Soph to Allison, who is nine, and Gio, who is five. Good take on a pitch away, grabbing a bag, and the trail runner comes right behind. That's a great read. EY took off immediately upon seeing that ball in the dirt. That coach was focused on his hitter, but EY reads it. Look at her feet never stop moving as soon as she sees it hit the dirt. Continues her momentum towards third. That's ball four. Pretty pitch over the outside corner. Hernandez walks to load the bases. Emily Yoon, who has been also very good in the circle. Had an RBI ground out last time up. And carry on, just looking for that strike zone. She's not out by much. A little high, a little off the plate. She's using that changeup really well, but it's diving down before the strike zone. And there she finds it. Just a little bit low, two and two, the count. Oh, and as a hitter, when you know your pitcher is having a hard time finding the strike zone, you take more and you make her work more. Yeah. Two, two. Popped up, right side, hugging the line. Down, it's a fair ball! In the second, two runs, scores, sometimes in this 
beautiful sport. It's better to be lucky than good. And you're rewarded for contact. Off the end of the stick, and I mean just inside that chalk. Now this is a lucky spot off the end of the bat. Great pitch. Just falls in no man's land. This happens so often, but right on that chalk line. Runners are running because there are two outs. They're going on contact. And now Malaya Vargas with a 10 to one Tigers lead, top of the fourth inning. And the count is 1-0 to Malaya. Singled twice, scored a run, reached on an error. see the faces of the athletes in the dugout, that's when you're reminded of that 10 u age. But watching them play with the masks on, <laughs> handling bats, they don't play like 10 u players. I'm with you. And then you see those precious little faces and you think, <laughs> oh my gosh, they're so young. Fly ball, shallow center, back up short, the play made by the second baseman. Coming on over and putting that one away. Big inning. A couple of more runs for the Tigers. But this pitch, this is a thing of beauty. Bottle that up. Time to get going and time to see if this Cruisers team can push back just a little bit down by a score of 10 to 1. Thanks, Okamoto, the second baseman, or I should say the catcher who doubled. Magnolia. Magnolia takes high, and the count is 2-0. and Rancho Palos Verdes, California. You talk about travel sports and how much fun these athletes have, even when they're young. I was asking her, she and her family, hey, what memories do you have? She said, I played on an 8U All-Star team. I got to travel and share an Airbnb with my best friends and their families. And we played softball to the right side. How about great defensive play? KK was in the right spot, and Cenas was right there. But Mags had a great time with Summer and Sophia at that Airbnb with the families. Well, I think that's the best part, especially since Airbnb has kind of come into play. It used to be hanging out in the hotel lobbies, visiting each other's rooms. But when you get to share a house with your friends, I don't think it gets much better than that. Off the end of the bat, beautiful swing. Myla Burroughs with a base hit. Myla who grounded out back in the second inning. First baseman, the pitcher as well for this team. Some early swinging right back up the middle, so we've now seen some better contact. Cruisers are hitting that ball harder. Way to barrel up. Oh, and one the count. Angelina Dubois. Yoon, she and her team as that one's popped to the right side again, playing shallow one right and again. Putting it away out there. KK, we got you. That's twice you have been there to make that play and seen us the right fielder. Yes, they only make one size jersey number and KK's, although she's a little diminutive out there, that 27, that's a skyscraper on her back. May see an athlete get a chance to hit. Let's see. Or maybe run. Taylor Brown, who 
has been playing in the field. I think they're going to find it a bat for Taylor. I think that's what it looks like. Great shots, the crowd. Anxious, anxiously awaiting. Carter Wheeler. It's not Brown, it's Carter Wheeler. Carter takes off the plate outside. An opportunity to watch Carter swing it. Carter takes outside and off the plate from Villa Park, California, Carter. First year of travel ball for her. Luke and Megan are her parents. Declan and Tanner are her siblings. Younger sis Tanner is only five years old. It reminds me of all these families at this point in their kids' career deciding whether to go travel, whether to stay in rec ball, and now finding yourself here thinking, what have I gotten myself into? But it's so addicting. It's such a fun, competitive environment. Hey, all you current travel ball parents. <laughs> Make it a welcome environment for those newcomers. Right. That's a roller. Sneaks past the circle. Carter's hustling up the line. And in time for the out. That will do it. They're three outs away. This Ohana Tigers team from winning a championship. For now, they look to add on, and they lead it 10 to 1. 10 new title game. Bottom half of the seven. Off the end of the bat. Down! The Hot Shots win it all. The 2021 16U Premier Division PGF National Champs. Hot Shots victorious at the 16U age group. Amanda Freed, Darren Sutton, and you. Glad to have you with us. The Ohana Tigers lead it by a score of 10 to 1. Seven hits, one miscue for the Tigers. Four hits, two miscues for the Cruisers. Ella carry on going back to work now. In the setting of run rules coming into play with a nine run lead, it's 10 to one. And three more outs to be recorded and that would do it. But again, the Cruisers hope to have something to say about that. Right now the Cruisers have their eye on getting through this half inning and getting back in the dugout. It's gonna take a little work, but it's definitely doable. Tulu, Tulu Lele, Salu, walked and scored, popped out, grounded out. And carry on trying to work away from the power. Salu's got a really nice swing. Two and one the count. Fan play, fan play. Everyone loved it. And you can keep it, as we told you earlier. On 2-1. That one misses just off the plate outside. Ella Carrion working in the circle. Dad France, a decade and a half, has been coaching this sport and doing a great job at it. And that one is high, it's ball four. Salou with the leadoff walk. Hey. 
Lexi Avila. Now batting third baseman number four, Lexi Avila. Couple of singles for Lexi, couple of runs scored. The Whittier, California native at Granada Middle School. Off speed pitch, sailed up by her helmet. One and one the count as carry on dots the outside corner to even it up. We're talking about France carry on in this program and how successful they've been. So much to be proud of. And his family, obviously, family ties to the sport with his daughters. France spends a few minutes with us now. Look, not exactly the result you want, France. We know that. But how proud are you of your athletes and what they've accomplished to get to this point? They, they've, came, they've come a long way. Um, you know, it started the year in the fall with the pandemic and to end up here, like, proud of the girls. Worked really hard. Little roller to the right side. There's one, and they'll try for two. Your love for this sport is a family love, right? I mean, it's obviously Julia at Pomona Pitzer. It's... Anna, who's on her way to Oregon State, as a father of this sport, how proud are you of your daughters? Very proud. It's, I mean, it's been a long grind. I've been coaching for 15 plus years, and you know, um, went through it with my older daughters, and now with my young one, um, Ella. So, um, hoping that she follows in her sister's footsteps. Oh, and we were talking up here about this age group and how every moment is a teaching moment. I just love watching. They have such passion for the game already at such a young age. And they're so talented. But from a coach's perspective, how much time do you spend on the teaching part of the game? I mean, winning is fun, but it's really about teaching these girls, right? Exactly. Um, we spend hours during the week working on the fundamentals of the game, the throwing, the base running, um, just situations, um, and just working on their softball IQ. You know, even at the young age, you know, trying to prepare them to eventually play at the higher level, um, you know, 12s, 14s, 16s, eventually 18s, and ultimately college. France, how's that voice doing right now for you? How you feeling? Ah, uh, little <laughs> horse, little horse. Hey, hey, listen, we, we appreciate the time. Before I let you go, uh, I, I think it'd be important for us to understand, boy, that's a nice play, really nice play. What the Cruisers stand for, if you're going to speak on behalf of the program, top to bottom, you have a great list of alumni, I could reel them off, but... For, for you, if you wear one of those uniforms out there, what are some of the standards? Um, just, uh, you know, the leadership of the, uh, of the organization and, um, you know, and, the, and the, the group of girls that went before them. So, you know, um, been happy with the Cruisers. Uh, Mel's been great. Um, so couldn't, couldn't ask for a better organization right now. France, thank you very much for introducing us to your program. Thank you. <laughs> France Carrion, who coached for... 15 plus years, Rachel Sid and Jazz Sievers up in Oregon, some of the names. Savannah Jockwish at LSU, Team USA, Cam Cecil at Iowa, Ailey Hilburn at Utah, Harley Hoover at LSU, just some of the names that have come through this program. Florida Stacy Nelson, the Cruisers. That's quite a lineup. <laughs> and, yeah, that far from touches them all, obviously. ball out towards short while coach was watching they played some good defense now in order to avoid having it end early they need some runs France carry on in his squad looking to put two or three runs on the board and get a couple of more at bats the 10U PGF title game he has two decades of coaching experience and his team doing good things Ohana Tiger is on top today hey coach thanks for spending time with us the journey of getting to this championship game no matter the result right now how proud are you of your of your athletes oh man I'm very very proud of them um, it's been a 12 month grind of you know focusing on the fundamentals and development and sometimes you know you just focus on the movements and you can't really focus on the results all the time um, so they've been really 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 good at that um, so I'm really proud of them, beyond proud. And when you come into a game like this, you think about the grind and what these athletes have been through throughout the year. But going into today, what was that pre-game talk? What was that meeting about? How do you motivate these girls to go out and remember to have a good time, but also to put everything that you have worked so hard on out there on the field? You know, I just try to keep them loose. You know, this group is, is special. They're, you know, they're, they're really calm. 
you know, sometimes I have to kick in the, in the butt just to get them going <laughs> because it seems like the energy's not there, but that, you know, they're just really calm and cool under pressure. And, you know, they, they seem to step up in big moments and I've never really been worried about them in those situations. You know, it's a testament to their, their hard work, their grind throughout this whole year and just the, the commitment to it. You know, like I said, I'm beyond proud of these, these young ladies. Two outs away from the title. One more question, Brandy Ey, the head coach. Talk to me about your families. We were just in sharing how important, good, patient, understanding families are. Talk to me about the relationship with your families, this current group. Well, you know, the patience part got put to the test right away because I told them we weren't going to play any kind of games or any tournaments for the first at least two and a half to three months that we were together because I just wanted to focus on us and getting our program in there and getting these girls working um, and grinding. So, you know, that was tough at first, but then I think they really realized the process and they're committed to it. Um, they're committed to getting to their lessons, to get in, getting the extra work in the garage, in the backyard, at the park, you know, and then coming to practice two, three times a week and, and just getting it done. So, you know, the parents, that, that's a huge part. That's it's beyond huge when, when everybody's on the same page and, you know, willing to get their kids to all the workouts we, we have for them. Andy, thank you. Best of luck these next couple of outs. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Andy Ey, the head coach of the Ohana Tigers. Ey, 2010s. How about that young birth year? The tens. <laughs> Ella Carrion, Big L. Talented shortstop and pitcher. We've seen her come in and restore some order as a pitcher. Hey, by the way, we talked about the Cal Cruises alum, Haley Hilburn. I would be remiss if I didn't point out that she pitched at Canyon High School for four years for Dan Hay, who is the president of Premier Girls Fast Pitch, and also a very active and talented coach. So Haley is on his resume of development. Trophy man is on the move. <laughs> Over the outside corner. There is one out away from the title and the hardware. Both these programs will be back. Both these programs will play deep into tournaments at PGF. Yeah, I think they've They've developed a love. I mean, it's contagious. They're feeling it right now, getting to this point. The families are excited. You know, this is, this is such a fun age group and really where it begins for a lot of young athletes. Popped up, center field. That will do it. It's a PGF title at the 10U age group. Ohana Tigers celebrate. to the Ohana Tigers. They've got the hardware. The 10U PGF Premier Division National Champs. Oh, you athletes, you have so many years left to enjoy this great sport, but enjoy today. And to the Cal Cruisers, what a journey. Congratulations, great coaches, great families, great athletes. This is the final out. Avellaneda put it away, and it was on. A little tackle at the social. Hold on, hold on, going down. That's so good. Ah, look out. And the good stuff. The good stuff. I think we may hear from Emily Yoon. And I think we should. 
The offense was there for Emily. Supported her, but oh, is she good in the circle. Look, when you go the distance, we need to talk to you. And Emily Yoon was very, very good. Let's hear from Emily. She's with Amanda Freed. Amanda, take it away. Yeah, I grabbed her. Emily, Emily, congratulations. You guys were phenomenal. You pitched a beautiful game. I need to know your emotions, the way that you were feeling before you stepped in the circle today. Uh, before I stepped in the circle, I was really nervous, and I was also really excited to finally play in BGF in the championship. Well, you guys did an amazing job. I know it was a really, really hard-fought week. You were up late last night and got up early this morning. How proud are you of your team's journey to get to today and then to perform the way that you did? I'm really happy for them. They made plays behind me, and they are really good for the whole weekend. You guys did a phenomenal job. Congratulations. Go celebrate your team with your team. You're the national championships. They're the national champions at the 10U level. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Emily Yoon, <laughs> there's some tears from family members up there. Teammate gathers around, they're lifting her in the air. Boy, this was fun. This is the treat. We love all you 12, 14, 16, and 18 U's, but these are the rookies. They want to be you, and we celebrate their efforts at such an impressionable young age. A celebration of softball, and we thank you for spending time with all of us. Our production team, there's no one better. Our producer, director, and leader of this event, John Walsh. For years, we've been able to work together on this event. And of course, Dan Hay and the entire PGF team. Nobody better. On behalf of Amanda Freed, the Olympic gold medalist and the national champion, one heck of an analyst, my name is Darren Sutton. Until next time, we congratulate the Tigers, the Cruisers. Another one in the books, the 10U national title game. My name's Darren. See you at a ballpark near you. Be well.